Hi, welcome to another Dalif tutorial. So good to be teaching you again today. I I want to say thank you for always watching, thank you for always subscribing, and thank you for always reaching out with your questions. Today I'm gonna we're gonna dive into APIs. APIs. Uh, I'm gonna show you how you can come how you can you you can make your Dalo application communicate with the outside world. A lot of time you're building stuff, you've re you, you don't need to re reinvent the wheel all the time. There are some data that are available, there are some um, solutions that are available that you want to connect with because you need to you need to be able to validate a whole lot of stuff when you do so. So I'm going to show you how you can make your dial application communicate with other applications and you know have the sync, do more, and still make sense. There's so many use cases for this. For example, you want to build a crypto listing application. You want to build a weather forecast application. You want to build an application that can enable you send test messages. You want to build applications that are... You want to build things like CRM. You want to build things like, a, like an NFT place. You want to build things like a search engine. Anything you want to build, you, um, anything that you want to build, you can extend it. You can extend your download application using APIs. So, um, what I'm, there are lots of API services out there, but I'm going to be using this M3O.com because it's affordable. It's affordable. It's easy and it's cheap. Yeah. So there are so many API services out there that you can use, but I do recommend mp3o.com because uh, lots of the you get a lot of API calls for uh, for almost nothing for almost nothing, and um, if you check it out if you check out the billing plans and options, you would see that um, there's a whole lot that you can achieve with um, with the free API services. I think this should be um, we can find. You can really find, if you go to, if I open a different page entirely and I go to mp3o.com, m3o, I go to m, m3o.com, you'll be able to see the, the pricing plan. So if I click on the pricing plan like so, scroll down, so you can see you can make a whooping 1 million API costs per month. Almost no other person can actually give you this. Almost no other um no other API service can actually give you this. You can make tons and tons of it, and also you can see um, lots of the other, lots of the other um, calls that you're going to be making. They are they are almost free. You're making one API call for zero point zero zero five per API call, and uh, you can just you know subscribe. You can just subscribe like so, and you're able to keep making calls, keep making calls all the time. But you can really make good use of the free calls. You pay as you grow, you pray, you pay as you go, you pray. You you pay, not pray. <laughs> as you go, you pay all the way. So let's go ahead and uh, see what we're going to be building. So I'll go to Explore. Uh, what we want to do is that we want to create some sort of a dictionary, some sort of a search engine or a dictionary that when you put a word in it, it brings an answer back to you. It's not something we're going to be putting on our Adalo database all the way. We're just going to be calling an external API for this. If I switch on to my database, I've created something, a question and answer. And the question and answer collection has search term, answer, and URL. So what I'm doing is that I'm just going to create a search term. This is the most important thing that I need, the search term. And for the answers, I'm going to be getting the answers from the API, and I'm going to be getting the uh, URL for external read from the API if I want to. So to do this, I'm going to add a form first of all. I'm going to add a form. Click on the form and you know just put it there. And what I want are users. And for the feed, I'm going to take the other feeds away, take the answer away, take the URL away, and I, I just want to be left with the create question and answer. Then I'll go to my submit button. I want to just you know take away the create question and answer and just leave it like so. Create question. And then I'm going to click on my add another action. For add another action, I'm going to go to my custom action, then click on new custom action. The reason why we're doing this is because the action we want to create is not in our database. It's outside of Adalo. It's outside of Adalo, so that's what we're doing. So I'm just going to say, uh, I'm just going to name it create question, or I'm going to say create answers. 
create answers and for the type i'm going to say the type is correct we're not saying update you're not deleting anything from it the table for example if you're dealing with something like a like a a notion database or you're dealing with something like a um, like a Google sheet then you could be doing like create update delete if you want to but this time we're just you know doing something that we don't really have so much control over we don't really have so much control over the data so what we're doing is that we're just requesting information from this API so we go for the API based URL so for APIs these are, there are things that are very common that you definitely must use so if I go back to m3o.com and you would see the first thing you'll see here. This is the API base URL. So you would see that the API, this is this is where the API is coming from, the data is coming from. And then what are we doing? We're searching for answers and then we're feeding it with the question. And then we'll first of all take this, just take this first of all right here like so. Control C, go back to your download application and just paste. That's all you have to do. So if you're going to use some, some tests, if you're going to use some tests to say, instead of having this question here, you're going to use some tests to add to it, to, 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 to put it there, that's fine. But we're not going to have any business with that in this lesson. So for my method, I'm going to say post. Since I'm not getting anything, I'm sending data to a particular place. That's what I'm doing. Then for my header, this is where it becomes very interesting. I click on add item and say header. And my name, the name, you're going to find all this information from your, from your, uh, from the API reference. The for, uh, different APIs have different header, they have different values that you're going to be using. So for this one, you would see that the header, which is H, H is header and content type is, content type is JSON. So we're going to say the header stands for the header. We're going to copy this and say authorization. That's what it's saying. Anything that is after this header, you copy it. Sometimes it doesn't have to be authorization for some other application. So we'll go right here and just paste it in. That's it. So if you've pasted that in, I'm pretty sure you're halfway there. Then we'll go back to our mirror. We'll go back to our mirror and say, Bier, just copy this. Just follow me. It might not make sense at first, but when you're done with it, you can put, I mean, put a uh, you can thank yourself that you did something great today then we'll go back to our mirror we're looking for our api key we'll click on this go to api key you can generate api key every time you like every time you like you can generate api keys every time you like yeah but we want to just use this this uh there's another api key that you can use that whenever you log out it will stop working yeah you would lose this api key whenever you log out the token will expire. So for a long-term use, uh, you should go ahead and generate your own API key like so, if you're building a real application. But since we're just doing this for lesson, for teaching purposes, I'm just gonna use a temporary API key. Then I'll go back to my, go back to my download application, hit the space button. Don't forget to hit the space button. If you don't, it's not gonna work. Hit the space button and paste it. Or sometimes just hit the space, just hit the enter button and paste it like so. Then we, when you scroll down, click on done, yeah? When you scroll down, we need to add this JSON, this, the body. So what are we going to pass to the API? What are we going to pass as this, the question? What are we going to pass as the question? So the question is supposed to have something like the query. If you go back to here, you will see it like so. Let's go back to our, let's go back. So you would see it like so. So the question here is supposed to have something like query slash the, the question yeah that's what we're supposed to have so this right here is the JSON format that we're looking for this right here we just copy Ctrl C so instead of having instead of having it like this query forgive me instead of having it like this query slash question we want to be able to put it dynamically that's what we want to do so we'll go back down here and just paste it right here when we paste it, take away the six, then take away the seven right there. And then we are left with the query and Microsoft. So if we, if we leave it like so, if we leave it like so, every time we run it, we'll, it will come with the definition of Microsoft. For example, if we just run it like so, it will come up with the definition of Microsoft every time we run it. Every time, every time. 
So what we'll do is now we'll click on the add test, add item, click on the test item, and then we'll say my question. It could be anything. It could be anything. You don't have to name it anything. Then for this, I'm going to say, uh, for the question, I'm going to say um, Jesus. Yeah, I'm going to say Jesus. That would be the question. Or I could say, let me frame it to be a question, a, a, a more question, and say, who is Jesus? That's the question I'm going to use. And then I'll come here, take, take away this Microsoft away from here, click on the plus sign, and just put my question in there. That's pretty straightforward, right? So the query is my question. So I'm entering everything dynamically. So I'll go ahead and run test. An error called invalid character in header content authorization. So let's go back. Let's go back. Invalid character. That's what it's saying. So sometimes these spacings can be, can just be, I mean, can just be super crazy. So let's go see it again. So now you can see test is successful. So what is it? Jesus is also referred to as this, as this, as the, Jesus is referred to as Jesus of Nazareth or Jesus Christ. He was a first century Jewish preacher and religious leader. He was a figure of Christianity. So you can see, then we have the Messiah, we have the URL. And then we have this image card from doc.go. Uh, you don't have to store any of this. You can just delete it and your, your application will work just the same way. So what we're just doing is that we'll just, uh, this is just a test. So if you're comfortable with it, you go ahead and say, so you're comfortable with it, you go ahead and say, save custom action, if you're comfortable. And then now you're good. So every time you search a query, it will go ahead and fetch the data from this API, and then you can use the data to do whatever you want to do with it. So click on the submit button right there. Click on the submit button like so, and then my question, I'll click on my question. For my question, I'll click on this. I would say it's going to be question and answer. It's gonna be the search term, that'll be the question. And then that was the first thing I'll do. The next thing I'll click on the first thing I'll do is to create a question, create answer. That's the first thing. That's, that's, that's the second action. Then you add another action to it again and say update new question. So what you're going to do is that you're going to update it with the search term. You're going to update it with the answer. Yeah. Update it with the URL. And if you want to, you can update it with the image also. Uh, to update it with the image, you go back to your database and add a property called image. Just add the property like so and call it image. And say save. So we'll go back to our database all over again. Uh, go back to after submit. Go back to update. Screw down. And for image, you would say create answer. So the image is likely not going to come out. It's likely not going to come out, so you're supposed to create answer image. It's likely going to come out because there's no image in it. There is no change in it. So it's likely not going to show up for this particular API. So after this, you can also create another one that will link to another screen entirely. So you just uh, this is just going to be a list, a, an information screen. This is going to be an information screen. Just create it. So what's going to be here, what's going to be here, the image source is going to be database, current question, image, but you're not going to see anything. So for this, you just take it away and click on the plus sign and say current question, answer. Then you can add another, you can add another test like so. Add another test like so. Then you call this current question URL, current question URL. So that's all can delete the, the, the button that you have here. That's all you have to do. So let's go ahead and uh, preview. Yeah, before we preview, I'll just go ahead and add a record so that I don't have to go through the stress of creating a user. Paul at no code 45. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel if this is the first time you're watching it. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, I need your subscription for the YouTube channel, for the YouTube algorithm. 
Um, besides, it's a way for you to say thank you. I like the content that you're creating and just keep creating more content. So if you've subscribed already, thank you very much. I really, really do appreciate you that you're subscribing and you're supporting me. Uh, so let's go ahead. I already have an account. I'm going to say paul at nocode45.com. Then I'm going to say no code. Click on the login. And then we'll enter our question. We'd say um, rice. So what is rice? Rice plant. Click on what is rice plant. Create a question create question and then it should reach out to that API it says sorry I don't know not good okay let's say let's type rice create a question it should reach out to that API right now and come up with something good so now it said don't have an answer for that but there's a related topic rice the seed of grass especially blah 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 so you can see the way it works this is supposed to be an image if it has an image so what you can do here is that you can say if there's no image I want you to show this so that's it that's how to create a, that's how to that's the fundamental of how you can create an API call. We're going to be doing something complex as we go, but just you know go practice this, sign up for m3o.com. It's free of charge, you're not paying a dime. Go practice this and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate. Don't forget to subscribe and if you have questions with regards to API, feel free to reach out to me and if you need help working on your app development project reach out to me on twitter the link is going to be below or you can check out my website nocode45.com and we'll just get started thank you so much for watching i really do appreciate it